from Moon Township, just outside Pittsburgh, is the ACC against the NEC as the Colonials of Robert Morris take on Pitt. And the Colonials open up a state-of-the-art new arena, the UPMC Event Center. Capacity 4,000 quadrupling their previous arena. It's been in progress for a while, and here it is. Ready to open up with Pitt's Panthers long-running rivalry between these two schools dating 30 games back 1978 is when they first met it's been all Pittsburgh they've won all 30 times so Robert Morris here in a new building tries to end all that frustration tonight hi everybody and welcome aboard Mike Crispino along with Noah Savage and we've got a couple of guards to look at tonight different style guys it should be interesting for Robert Morris, it's Josh Williams, the flamethrower, the red shirt senior, who last year set an NCAA record with 15 three-point makes in one game. He's got that Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, in the gym type capability. And for Pitt, it's all about Xavier Johnson. He set a freshman record scoring last year, also had four and a half assists a game. He needs to play under control tonight. He and Trey McGowan's need to set the tone for Pitt. Turnovers have been a problem for them early on this season. And Pittsburgh comes in one and one as the Colonials being announced here. Uh, looking for their first win of the season. Pittsburgh 24 straight road losses. That's the fourth longest current losing streak in the NCAA. You got to go back to 2017 when they won at Boston College. So they'd love to snap that streak and keep this one going against Robert Morris. Again, they've beaten them 30 straight times. So the introductions of the players and the Colonials are fired up, no doubt. You have a new home and you got a rival in the house. You want to put on a great show. You got the Colonial crazies to our left here, Mike. They packed this building. It's a great atmosphere, a great crosstown game. And if you're Robert Morris, you're looking at that Nickel State game who just knocked off Pitt and you're saying, hey, we got them in our building now. They've got to feel great. This is a winnable game for Robert Morris if they play up to their capabilities. And Robert Morris coming off a loss on the road at Notre Dame. They did not compete very well, as their coach Andy Jewell told us. They found the school in 1921. They rolled just over 5,000 among their notable alumni, the former Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. Charlie Batch, but they are good fans, and they've got a good basketball program here at Robert Morris. Josh Williams' younger brother, John Williams, is the point guard. He's more of a pass-first guard. He's got to set the tone along with Dante Tracy and get the basketball to Yanni Smeni and to Josh Williams. And on the other end, they've got to slow down Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowan's, and the newcomer, Ryan Murph Murphy, who is Pitt's new Deep threat. He's been playing great early, 16 points a game. So the Colonials and Pittsburgh and the Panthers win the tip. And they will start it out shooting at the basket where the Robert Morris bench is. Pitt just runs a little flex action. This is simple stuff. And a corner jumper by Murphy, the man you just talked about. Well, he's just been feeling it. He is absolutely on fire. Pump fake, barely needed any separation in the corner. The Colonials lost to Marshall in their opener on the road. So they're at home for the first time in a brand new building. Giannis Mendy misses a short jumper on the baseline. The Panthers come away with it. The drive and the bank goes in and out. It was Trey McGowan's. Good five man box out by Robert Morris inside. Remember, Coach Tool told us to shoot around that he's trying to get his program to learn how to defend at an elite level. Oh, they go out of you. And Trey McGowan's crushes it. And an early lead for Pitt. They got the first two hoops here in the new arena. They could be one of the most exciting backcourts in the country. Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan's. You take the biggest step in college basketball between freshman and sophomore year. And if they could take that giant leap, they could compete in the ACC. Robert Morris starts two seniors, two juniors, and this man, the sophomore. 
Dante Tracy, he has the ball in his hands. Robert Morris wants to slow it down a little bit, play a little slower than Pitt. They got to stay aggressive. Tracy draws the double. They get it to Brahma, and his jumper rims in and out. Rebounded by Terrell Brown. Ooh. That was a Tim Hardaway double cross by Xavier Johnson. He made that look easy. That's a difficult move. Woodbridge, Virginia is where Johnson comes from. Murphy open again, top of the arc. Misses, though. And Brahma has the rebound. And let's see, a traveling violation has been whistled. Here's the exciting sophomore duo for Pitt. Getting out on the break, nobody locates McGowan's up top. Elevating at only 6-3. Panthers in that loss to Nichols State just a couple of days ago after winning against Florida State at home to open their year. Suffered a letdown, so they're coming out strong here in this one. Murphy, and he, well, wait a minute. It's a whistle, and I believe it is on. Robert Morris, Josh Williams. Resorting to holding Ryan Murphy already. He's been really active using those screens. Another look. And he just he dive just, bombs his way into the screener. He just killed Audis Tony. That's that's how you give up your body screening. Fadeaway missed by Audis Tony. Sophomore. Pitt starts a young team, three sophomores and two juniors. And Robert Moore is using that high screen, but they're not being aggressive. They're just going side to side. You've got to attack the guy who switches. Now the drive inside, and the scoop is good, but no, they're going to wipe it off. Two great plays in a row by Audis Tony. First he sets the screen and gets a Charlie horse. Then he gets up and gets outside the restricted area, takes the charge perfectly. And just That's barely. Doing the dirty work. Yeah, he got his heel off that line just in time. Panthers right now throwing a shutout three minutes in. Murphy tries a fadeaway. That's off the front rim. He doesn't even need a full pump fake. He just looked at the rim and got a piece of the paint. Robert Morris looking for their first bucket ever in this building on opening night, UPMC Event Center. Here's the drive, Williams. No. Battle for it. Shot rejected, and the Panthers come up with it. And a block that time from Terrell Brown. The average is three a game. They dump it down to him, and he banks it home. And the Panthers are up 7 nothing. Great play on the smaller aspects of the game, the little things. Terrell Brown with the block, and then he slipped that screen beautifully. That ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay the Colonials' way. Here's Terrell the block Brown shot. Takes that away, and good job to keep it in bounds. Bill Ruskell esque. And then turns it into offense, slips the screen. And Robert Morris needs a second helper underneath. He walks into that layup. Colonials 0 for 4, three turnovers, two fouls. So nothing but negative so far. Got 10 seconds to shoot. This is John Williams, the junior brother. Tracy launches and he got knocked down. That's a three shot foul. You don't want to do that. Brian Murphy. Call for the foul. Three free throws coming up, and we return. Noah Savage talks with Josh Williams about long range shooting when we come back. Uh oh, no Wi Fi at your in law's house? It's switching time. And now it's Netflix time. Watch Netflix offline. Switch to Chromebook. Back, we're back on the campus of Robert Morris. I'm joined by senior Josh Williams, who hit a record 15 three-pointers in a game last season. Josh, a lot of people are making a big deal out of moving the line back a little bit, but 
We're out here in Josh Williams' range. How far do you feel comfortable shooting the basketball? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much comfortable anywhere across half court. Um, it really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, in range, open, you're going to let it fly, right? Of course. So your 15-3 last year was a step through, basically heels on the emblem. I call this emblem range. You still got that in your uh, repertoire? Of course. All right, let's see it. That's such a great time hanging out with the Robert Morris players today at shoot around. And Josh Williams and John Williams need to come alive for Robert Morris right now. I mean, here's a guy who's not shy. He shot 10 and 16 in their first two games. He hasn't even had an attempt yet. Mike, he needs to get some up there, man. Let's go, new building. <laughs> <laughs> and the first point by the Colonials here in the new building. There's Josh Williams, joined by Jordan Lyons, Furman. Keith Feeney of Marshall with 15 in a game. Ronald that, Blackshear at 14, too. Jordan Lyons hit 15 the day after Josh Williams did it. That's Are you amazing. kidding me? Stealing the spotlight. I'd be like, you kidding me, man? Tough to make three free throws in a row, but Tracy just did it. One other item. You were shooting threes today, and you were knocking them down. I, I put the stats together. 60% from outside for you. You're, you got working your D, man. You shoot right over the top of you. <laughs> That's not too difficult. All right, so on the board, Robert Morris. Here's Johnson, and the ball knocked off him, and out of play. Good strip underneath by Josh Williams. Those three free throws by Tracy were huge just to get Robert Morris going. They've got to attack. they got to get into the paint and create some contact. That's the one thing that Jeff Capel talked about after the shoot around this morning and taking care of the ball. Let's not turn it over. You're on the road. Here's Tracy to the basket. Mindy baseline jumper good. And five straight points by Robert Morris. Yanis Mendy, the transfer from Missouri State West. The Frenchman with a great pump fake. Justin Champagny is coming to ball game, number 11. He's a freshman. And backcourt violation. And the crowd getting into it. You can hear him. He talked about his team, how they don't have that tradition right now in the program where the older players can kind of show the way to the young guys. And they're going through their maturation process altogether. But an unforced error against the non oppressive D just kills you as a coach. Yeah, he talked about maturity today. He's got a young team trying to rebuild the Pitt basketball program that had some great success 2000 through 2016, but now they're starting from down below in the ACC. Their preseason picked 10th in the league. 14 and a half to go here in the first half. Pitt scored the first seven. Robert Morris, the next five. There's Williams, nice up fake. Jumper good. And we're tied. 7 0 run by the Colonials. And the Colonial craze, he's loving it. These teams have not met since 2011. Johnson is blocked. Loose ball picked up and thrown away. Oh, well, they're going to give it a Pittsburgh. Good active defense by DJ Russell, but he got a hand on it last down below. But how fast is Xavier Johnson? He's a blur. Big time score for pa the Panthers. Has the ball in his hands now. It's this matchup zone. Shot clock down to five. Oh! An offensive foul. Up on Tracy, he's fired up. And that's a call we're going to see some more of as the season goes on. Dante Tracy, who's one of the leaders emotionally, a glue guy for Robert Morris, slides the feet and takes the charge perfectly. Tracy doing it on the offensive end early as well. He's got eight of the team's 23 assists headed into the game. 
That's being alert. That's knowing the scouting report for the best player on the other team. Tracy from Orlando, Florida. There's a drive by Williams, cut off. Long three. And that's off the back rim from Jalen Hawkins, who just came in the game, a sophomore from Utica. Kick to Murphy, doesn't shoot it. They work the perimeter. And that's going to be a traveling violation. Talking to Coach Cable before the game, he said he wants his team, especially Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson, just to make the simple play. Just take the play that's in front of you. And right now, too many guys for Pitt are trying to do their own thing on the offensive end. Just play through Xavier Johnson. Let him make every play. He gets wherever he wants. Let him set you up. Pittsburgh started fast, scored seven in a row, have not put a point on the board in almost three and a half minutes. This is John Williams, deals to his brother Josh, and Josh knocks it down. It's not enough to have a hand near Josh Williams. So little brother gives it a big brother. And a triple gives Robert Morris their first lead. You got to stop him from shooting it. Being near him isn't going to do anything. McGollins now starts the drive, and he's blocked. Oh, the whistle blows. This is Josh Williams' favorite type of shot. He can just stare you down. And if your hand isn't stopping him from shooting, he'll shoot it from anywhere. I mean, his feet are set. That's a layup for him. Second most in school history, 103 last year. And as you just demonstrated with him earlier, he can shoot it from way downtown. If you hit 63s in a season, you're a great shooter. If you hit 70, you're a great shooter. He hit over 100 last year. It's big time, that's for sure. Made four of ten in the opener at Marshall. They lost the game 87 to 80. And two misses. Ball batted around, and it's going to be Robert Morris' ball. Over the back on Audis Tony down low. How about this atmosphere? The, the Colonial Crazies, I think, affected that free throw. You know, 6 o'clock start Eastern time. It's kind of a different starting time, but folks are filled in now, and the place is jammed. They played in the rec center across campus last year, and Andy Toole was telling us it was a little different, but it got to be kind of a cool spot once you found a place to park. Now the drive inside, and a whistle. It's going to be on Ryan Murphy. And Jalen Hawkins will go to the line. I think he's in the act of shooting. That's two on Ryan Murphy. He's going to come out of the game. But Andy Toole, of course, started his playing career at Elon, played two years there, transferred to Penn, got to play in the Big Five, was an all Ivy League performer, was a really great player. And I think he knows the value of when you play at a mid major like Robert Morris, but you get to play a high major school like Pitt, that's kind of like playing at Penn and you get to play Villanova and St. Joe's. And he wants to be a guy who, who starts that tradition here. And we saw Ryan Murphy got some time with Steph Curry this summer. Got to train with him. Yeah, when he went to, uh, he was at Charlotte. Of course, Curry makes his offseason home around there. 12-0 run now by Robert Morris in a five-point lead. The one word that Ryan Murphy came away from that, those workouts with Steph Curry, no revelation. He's unguardable. Yeah, when you play with a pro, and I had an opportunity as a player to work out with several pros in the summer, Gerald Henderson, Nolan Smith, guys in the Philly workout, you realize the difference between a good college player and a pro. And Steph Curry, obviously the greatest shooter of all time, I think Ryan Murphy realized, wait a second, <laughs> I, I, I still need some more hours in the gym, but that second foul on him is huge. To get him out of the game, that's huge for Robert Morris. Panthers in a major drought here. Giving up 12 straight points, five to shoot, the drive inside, Johnson in and out. Rebound, Russell. E.J. Russell, the junior from Jacksonville, rips it down. Jalen Hawkins with the great defense late. He jumped away and didn't commit the foul. Here's Russell, ripped through, boom, he scoops it, and it counts. 
And right now, things not going Pittsburgh's way by any means. They've given up 14 straight. Robert Morris has never beaten Pitt. They're trying to end that tonight. Happy birthday, all caps, exclamation point, exclamation point, cake slice emoji, candle emoji, emoji with the hard eyes. Oh, we got smacked. Robert Morris has certainly delivered the first punch. They deserve to win the game throughout. They were up 10-0. Robert Morris is pitching a shutout. They were more physical. They made shots. They were, appeared to be more skilled. They beat us every which way. For three. That was 2013 of the NIT, the first round. John Calipari with Kentucky. He was born right here at Moon Township, attended Moon Area High School, played basketball at Clarion University in Pennsylvania. Of course, went on to coach uh, Memphis in the NBA with the Nets and then Kentucky. And the Colonials only trailed for a total of 32 seconds in that game. That was a major upset. And it was in this building not the new arena, obviously, but this place, the roof came off when that happened. And he's got a squad again, number one in the country. Emmanuel Quickly, Johnny Juzang, Tyrese Maxey, the exciting freshman. And another guy to keep an eye on is Khalil Whitney, a McDonald's All-American who really hasn't had a, that giant breakout, but I think he's a pro. Kentucky, I think his final four bound this year. All right, here's Johnson in traffic, and his shot is short. And the Colonials on the breakout. They've scored 15 straight points. Pitt scoreless for over five minutes now. John Williams. John Williams needs to attack that switch. He just went side to side in the pick and roll. Attack the second guy who comes out on you. Attack him. The William brothers both from Akron. Here's a corner three. That's good. And Robert Morris is on fire. That's Charles Bay. 18 to 7. I was saying a moment ago, the Williams brothers, both from Akron, they went to the same high school LeBron James did. St. Vincent, St. Mary's. Here's a three ball, and that one's off the back rim. It tapped around, rebounded by Penn to miss point blank, and finally a foul is called. So the Panthers attack the 10. Terrell Brown will get free throws. John Williams able to get more penetration. That free throw area kicks it out. Bain comfortable in darkness. Hits from the corner right in front of his student section. And the place erupts. Finally, the drought is snapped by the Panthers. They led the game 7 0. Now they're down 18 8. And here's a calculated risk by Jeff Capel. He brings Ryan Murphy back with two fouls. I like it. He needs scoring. I mean, they're having trouble putting the ball in the basket. And Terrell Brown needs to do more of what he just did, which is park himself down low, be active on the glass, and get some easy buckets for Pitt. Ryan Murphy's got to be smart. He's too valuable for Pitt. He did his third foul here in the second in the first half. So Brown's two free throws cuts the lead to nine. Here's Hawkins. That's no good. Rebound by the Panthers. It was a great attack, though. Doesn't matter if it didn't make it. Good penetration. Nice feed down low, and the ball rims in and out. The putback is good. Good second effort that time by Andes Tony, the sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. So now the Panthers trying to climb back in this thing and a near steal. Corner man for three. No in and out. Bain once again found that corner. Good spacing by Robert Morris early. Now whistle stops play there. It was Bain's third three of the season. Sunday at three, Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Number 15, Florida.
rolls into stores to take on UConn at Gamble Pavilion. Last time the Gators came to stores, 2013, Shabazz Napier hit a game winner at the buzzer. And UConn won at 65 to 64. Here's Murphy in the corner, and he splashes home a three. So Pittsburgh went almost seven minutes between field goals. And they're back within five. Great sub by Coach Cable. Comes in the game, knocks down a three. Here's a steal. And there's a steal. Pulls it down. And the Panthers with a quick strike of their own. Back within three. Trey McGowan's is making his own personal and one mixtape on dunks in the first half. He took off from the NEC. That's the Northeast Conference against the ACC here tonight. Williams long range, and it's short. And the Panthers come up with it. And the ball deflected out of bounds. And John Williams. It needs easy buckets, and McGowan's jumps in the lane and lifted off from the NEC. That was sensational. Look how far he jumped from. Uh. Pittsburgh has played against Northeast Conference opponents 74 times prior to tonight. The record is 73 and 1. Only Wagner back in 2011 beat them. Here's a drive, and there's contact and going to the line. Xavier Johnson. But a game of runs. It opened up 7 0. Robert Morris answered 18-0, and now Pitt on an 8-0 run. Well, Trey McGowan's can be explosive. He had 30 against Florida State last year. He had 26 against Boston College. His 64 steals a season ago led the team. And he had a game where he had seven steals against West Virginia. But that last drive by Xavier Johnson, you want to talk about having multiple gears. Put the ball in his left hand. Hezzy shook the defense. He got where he wanted. He's got speed, but he also knows how to be shifty. Not John, a lot of guys have both. Uh, Johnson averaged 15 and a half as a freshman, 11 and a half this year. And there's a foul on the Panthers. It is the sixth team foul. Both teams with six team fouls. 8-13 to go on opening night in the UPMC Event Center. First time ever. Brand new, 4,000 people crammed into the place. Josh Williams, high arcy jumper, way short. Rebounded by Brown. That's a great play design by Coach Toole. Pick and roll, ro the roller then pins down for Josh Williams. He got a wide open three. A steal on the move. Brahma all the way through the defense, but he missed the layup. Nice move, but he couldn't convert. Step back three, short. That one from Xavier Johnson. The new three-point arc is a little bit longer. It remains to be seen how the players will adapt to that. Doesn't matter for guys who can shoot. Does not matter, I'm telling you. Feels like nothing. When you were at Princeton, it was 19-9. That was in another era. It's embarrassing how close that was. <laughs> Seems like a layup now. Oh, Williams, nice feed and a conversion. Nice play by A.J. Brahma. Brahma making himself available underneath at the right time. He timed that perfectly. He had a double-double against Marshall in that opener. 11 points, 10 rebounds, made all five of his field goals. Three-point lead for Robert Morris. Colonial's back in a man-to-man. -man. McGowan's drives left hand and scoops it in. Yeah. Took advantage of the little opening in the defense, and it's a one-point game. He is a super athlete. He could have dunked that one, too. This is the pace Robert Morris wants. Slow it down, control possessions. Pitt wants to go up and down. John Williams draws the D, now Tracy. Oh, he lost it. Here comes Johnson, goes left with it and shot it right-handed and missed it. Two on one, he should have dished it at the last second. 
Or maybe used his left hand. He was on the left side of the basket. On East Mendy, a John Williams three. That's in and out. So the Colonials have gone cold from three. Yanis Mendy completely whiffed on that screen, and Williams still was wide open for three. So that's a bad screen, and that's bad defense by Pitt. And he still got the open shot. But they got the result. Ball didn't go in. Sometimes guys miss. <laughs> yeah, that's an elbow throw that time by Gerald Dumbo. Dumbo. It's the seventh team foul. Robert Morris in a brand new building, challenging Pitt and leading 20 to 19. It's here. Finally, download the Disney Plus app now to start streaming the best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic ad-free wherever and whenever you want. For more, go to DisneyPlus.com. Now, The Simpsons are on Disney Plus. Yeah, you're a big Simpsons guy. I'm a big fan of that, and now, now I have the app. I'm going to get the app so I can have The Simpsons whenever I need The Simpsons, not just after football Who's games, anytime. Who's your your favorite Simpsons character? I like Homer. Yeah, you seem, you seem a little bit like Homer. Like Homer? In terms of, you know, intelligence, awareness. Maybe, really? maybe Mr. Burns, I don't know. Mr. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment. Excellent. I'm not sure. Excellent. That's you. Yes. Yes. It's it's a welcome relief, The Simpsons, to the. I mean, but how great is it going to be to stream that stuff? I know. Us? We'll never have a boring flight again. No, ever. You get all ever. Of Star Wars. You get all of Marvel. I like National Geographic. Yeah. Too. I'm big on that. It's great. Fabulous series. Here's the back door, and the kick. The three, short. The rebound, banked in. Uh, crashing the boards, and that's a big bucket. Giannis Mendy. Great awareness by Josh Williams to see Terrell Brown coming down, kick it out to his brother. And then Giannis with the heads up play to get the rebound. Oh, and a nice tip in that time for the Panthers. I think it was Justin Champagny. Got his hand on it. And a one point lead. 440 to go here in the first half. An opening night at the UPMC Event Center. First time ever. Robert Morris game in his building. Here's Williams. Nice feed. And a lay -in. Great cut that time by A.J. Brahma. And the ball movement was fantastic. Started the ball on the right side. Got it all the way along the baseline. Great cut. Robert Morris is gelling right now. Brahma's Excellent got four. Chemistry. Got four. Pitt had a seven-point lead early. Here's McGowan's wild shot, but he drew the contact from Tracy, and he's going to earn two free throws. I don't like that call at all because I think Dante Tracy did a great job maintaining legal guarding position. He kept his hands high. He didn't hand check him, and then he jumped backwards. And there's a point of emphasis, as you know, Mike, to not reward the offensive player who's trying to make contact and initiate contact with the defensive guy and the way I look at that is he had no business even taking the shot as he makes the free throw I mean I don't think he had a shot to make what well, shot Let's all see. the way back to his right and Tracy's trying to get out of the way he's moving backwards that's a no call remember just because it's ugly doesn't mean it's a foul uh, Tracy's upset goes to the bench Little full court pressure by the Panthers at four minute mark. And a one point lead for Robert Morris. Look at the great spacing, how Robert Morris is all the way deep in the corners. It gives you so much more room to drive. And a block. Terrell Brown came out of nowhere and rejected that one into the first row. So a timeout. Terrell Brown. Another great block says, take this back to sender. Robert Moore is trying to get it done against Pitt.
This is the Nest Hub Max from Google. It plays live TV, and you can pause it with magic. Ta-da! Un-ta-da! Ta-da-off! ta da The Colonial Crazy is enjoying this one. Robert Moore is trying to beat Pittsburgh for the first time in the history of the series. 0-30, and the Colonial leading the way. It's been an evenly played game in just about every statistical category, but in these moments, Noah, it's been all one team or the other. Robert Morris is at their best, and they've been on these runs when they play great offensive basketball in the half court, penetrating and kicking for threes for Charles Bain and Josh Williams. And on the other end, Pitt is at their best and they're getting out in transition. Trey McGowan's with two monster jams, one of them off the steal. Neither team shooting well from three, three for 12 between the two of them. I'm having PTSD seeing that Colonial. It looks like a Penn Quaker. <laughs> Andy Tool's trying to recreate Penn here. I see what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. The Princeton guys get upset about that all the time. <laughs> so 325 to go in the first half. Mike Crispino, Noah Savage, and an interception. And a run out. And a layup. But no. No foul either. Back come the Panthers. Alley oop. And two. Perfect feed to Justin Champagny. Jalen Hawkins is just way too concerned about getting fouled. You've got to sprint to the cup, elevate, and not worried about it. That's Terrell Brown, even though he wasn't in the play. He's getting in the heads now of the Colonials. They're looking around for blocked shots. Pittsburgh's first lead since 7-5. to five. That was in the opening minutes. A step back three. That one's no good. So Colonials have gone ice cold from behind the arc. Two and a half to go. Tom Williams got great separation on that move. I mean, the first you say, wait, step back three, but he got himself wide open. Man, the floater goes in. The, the challenge for Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan is all above the shoulders. Because they get wherever they want on the court at any time. It's all about decision making. They're great athletes. They've got all the skills. It's all about whether to pass or shoot. And a shot blocked along the baseline. Terrell Brown's got a couple of those tonight. That sets him apart as a shot blocker. I mean, most guys, if you pump fake and they're out of the play, he, he went for the fake and still got the block. Final minute and a half, the first half. Gowns, bad pass, turnover. <laughs> and a long three from the corner. Oh, Bain's got a couple of those. Johnson on the move, and a kick out, and a miss. Robert Morris will settle for Audis Tony taking contested two. That's good defense by the Colonials. And they've gotten good shots, and they've been able to get a piece of the paint and pass it out at the last second. That's not working. <laughs> You can't drive right into Terrell Brown. He's going to throw it back in your face. Uh, he's got three blocks now. And a timeout will be called by Pitt. 27.3 seconds remaining in a tie game in the first half between Pitt and Robert Morris. Not much. How about you? Are you answering my text in person? I am, yeah. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech advanced engine in its class. Out of the timeout, the Panthers who gave up an 18-0 run to Robert Morris, back even at 27 apiece. And they're probably going to try to run as much of this down, I think. You hold for one here. 
You go at about nine seconds and look for something that's going to touch Xavier Johnson's hands with Ryan Murphy running off screens. He's going to be on the move. Colonials led by 11 midway through the half. Early on, it was all pit. They led by seven. Those are the biggest leads. Missed shot. Here come the Colonials. They got a chance at the buzzer. No good. Dead even, 27 apiece. The Panthers have had all kinds of turnover problems against Nichols State. Cut those down a little bit, but still eight in the first half. We're all even, and the Colonial Crazies loving it here at Robert Morris. They're tied with Pitt. New arena, the UPMC Event Center, and a lot of star-studded fans about. Kevin Colbert is the general manager of the Steelers. Mel Blunt, four-time Super Bowl champ. Rocky Blyer, too, on hand for this one. Charlie Batch won two of them between 2002 and 2012. And a more recent vintage, Juju Smith-Schuster, the wide receiver, is here. And he's hanging out in the Colonial Crazy section. <laughs> No, How Savage. awesome is that? That's pretty no, cool. He went. He full, just shows up and he's sitting next to you. He almost went Bobby Valentine with the disguise on. You know, he's <laughs> just trying to blend in with the students and enjoy this new arena. It's been great. Yeah, one thing the Steelers know is defense, right? Now, we saw some defense from the Pitt Panthers in the first half. Yeah, and they did it in a number of ways. Terrell Brown, what an unbelievable shot blocker. He's got the timing and the bounce. And he waits. He'll wait for you to pump once or twice. And a couple of these he was able to keep in bounds. That was the one that makes him special, where he's able to get it even though he went for the fake. And then Trey McGowan's, what a player and what a sensational athlete. He did that one for the gram. He posed halfway up for that shot. That was unbelievable liftoff. And you can see they held Robert Morris to 32% shooting. Another team had found the range from outside. Three for 10 for Robert Morris, one for five for Pitt. Yeah, Pitt only had eight free throws in the first half. Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan's need to get to the free throw line. They had eight turnovers. The only thing keeping them in this game at this point is their defense, and in particular, Terrell Brown and his four blocks. Now, remember, he had a game against Colgate where he had nine blocks. So if Robert Morris keeps driving in there and they don't kick it out, he's happy to stay down there all day and swat it back in their face. And actually, that helped the Panthers get back in this thing because the Colonials went on that 18 nothing run, open up a double-digit lead, and then Pittsburgh tightened it up defensively and slowed things down. They got back even at the break. So the Colonials start with it, and a traveling violation and a turnover there. And both these teams need to use this game to get a lot better quick, Mike. You think about the Northeast Conference where Robert Morris was picked fifth. You got Fairleigh Dickinson with Coach Greg Miranda. Always has a great team. St. Francis, PA, the Red Flash. LIU Brooklyn is tough this year, but we were talking about this before the game. Robert Morris is rarely picked to win the league, but they often do win the league. So this league is wide open once again. And Trey McGowan's, what a move there as he banks it home. And they've never been picked to win it. They've won it eight times during all that. So they're a team that rises up as the season moves on, the Colonials of Robert Morris. There's Tracy, long three, front rim, no good. Troubles continue for the Colonials from outside. They're now three of 11. But to Tony unable to control it. You know, Pitt was picked 10th in the ACC, coming off a three-win conference Ledger last year, Jeff Capel got them to 14 wins. And they got a murderer's row in the ACC. I mean, Duke, again, is loaded. Vernon Carey Jr., Cassius Stanley. And I like Matthew Hurt. He's their stretch four. A little bit of Keith Van Horn in his game, but he's also got great one-on-one. -on -one. He's big and can shoot it, but he's a lot more athletic than people think. And everybody around college basketball knows about Cole Anthony. What a player. Incredible athlete. And being around him down in the McDonald's game, I can tell you he approaches the game with that Kobe alpha dog type of mentality. He is 
scary good. He's a bad dude. Yeah, 30 plus in his debut on the college scene. Greg Anthony, his dad, makes an NBA player in his day. Here's a drive by McGowns, and there is contact there. Or Walton will make the call. Now, Sunday at 3 on ESPN and the ESPN app, number 15, Florida rolls in the stores to take on UConn at Gamble Pavilion. The last time those two got together in stores, 2013, Shabazz Napier had a game winner at the buzzer to give the Huskies a one-point win, so that should be interesting. And the Gators added Kerry Blackshear from Virginia Tech inside. They've got Trey Mann, an exciting freshman. Scotty Lewis out of New Jersey, who's a sensational athlete and an elite defender. Florida's going to be a huge story in the SEC and nationally. Has a great chance to make the Final Four as well. And UConn and Florida are in the Charleston Classic in a couple of weeks, so they could end up meeting twice in the course of 10 days or so if the things go the way they might go. So that could be interesting, playing the same team twice early in a season like that. Here's Williams, nice dump down. Brahma lays it up, missed it. And again, that man you talked about, Terrell Brown, was there to be a stopper. And a blocking call down along the baseline. That's going to put Trey McGowan's on the line. Yeah, John Williams thought he was there, but he just inched his feet to the left at the last second. As McGowan's took off, little shuffle, little slide by Williams. Great call underneath. And he moved his shoulder into him. You can't do that. And you were just talking about the ACC. How about Louisville and Chris Mack? You know, they were in some trouble a couple years ago, obviously, and they had a lot of changes there. Chris Mack comes from Xavier, and he's got them thinking, you know, top ten right now. I'm a huge Chris Mack fan, the way he builds a program from top to bottom. Jordan Wara is a star, obviously. Huge game the first time out, 32 points. And they added in Lamar Fresh Kimball, the grad transfer from St. Joe's, who just adds another playmaker for Louisville. I think those three... Duke, UNC, Louisville set themselves apart at the top of the ACC. And you know they'll be 23,000 strong at the Young Center every time they play. Williams for three. That's good. They needed that. Kid had opened up with a 6-0 run to start the second half. And it was John Williams, the junior. Not so much the three-point field goal maker, but that one they had and they needed it. He's a pass first guard, but he needs to make shots. That's what Andy Toole told us at shoot around. He needs... He and Bain and Tracy to step up and hit from downtown. As his first one of the night, he's one for four now. Three-point pit lead. Mike Crispino, Noah Savage here in Moon Township. And a long jumper from Murphy. And he unleashes the quill. He pulled the arrow out and shot it into the crowd, which is his trademark. But that's the second three where he pump fakes. He went to the side and didn't get an easier shot and still made it. Made a start tonight. Pitt needs some scoring. Is a corner three back to back. John Williams delivers. Might get a shootout in the second half. Wide open threes. They're falling, Mike. Williams has six after being shut out in the first half. Murphy wants to shoot this again. Oh, nice dump down on and a bucket. The conversion as Murphy worked well with Terrell Brown. Now Murphy not just a shooter. Here's a playmaker. All right, Ryan Murphy, he set that up by looking at the hoop. Got Robert Morris a little bit off balance, and then Terrell Brown able to finish. When you're that good of a shooter like Ryan Murphy, you've got to use your eyes and your pump fake to get into the paint. The Brahma's got to go to the bench with three fouls. As we had a stoppage there on that free throw, I don't know what happened. There's an and one, there's a lane violation. And then they called the lane violation and now they corrected it that it went in. It counts. Yeah, basket counted, so even penalty though. Penalty was declined. <laughs> exactly. It was the Colonials who violated. Didn't matter when the bucket went in, so it's 39 33. Lots of changes on the rules side. Points of emphasis in the new season. You'll notice on a missed shot, same team rebounds. The shot clock 
resets to 20 instead of 30. So that'll pick up the pace of things. The pit offense looks so much better with Ryan Murphy in this game. They are so much more confident knowing they have the score on the court. McGowan slices through, kicks, open man Murphy corner. And yes! And in the face of Tracy, the man guarding him. That's the biggest lead for the Panthers tonight, 42-33. Can't leave him. He's a driller. He's a must dribble. You got to get in his shorts and follow him home. It doesn't matter. Wherever he goes, you do not help no matter what. It could be Michael Jordan driving down the paint. Let him have two. He got 11. Remember, Pitt's trying to snap a long road losing streak. They've dropped 24 in a row going back to 2017. And right now, they're gaining control of the ball game up nine. Drift to the corner. If he's not open, he goes to the corner for a ball screen. Let McGowan's create. And McGowan's on a drive, and he's able to convert it. Banks at home. Biggest lead for the Panthers. Great execution. Option one wasn't open. Good patience. The helper stayed with Murphy on the perimeter. McGowan's got all the way to the cup. Right now, the Colonials having trouble getting their offense started. Pitt doing a nice job of digging in. Here's Josh Williams. Baseline jumper good. Nice feed that time. Josh found Yanis Mendy, and that will bring us to a timeout. The Colonials needed a bucket. They got one there. Ryan, Mur Ryan Murphy, he helps him in a number of ways. The pump fake, drop it in. And then when he spaces out to the corner, you can't help off him. He's on fire for Pitt. Happy birthday, all caps, exclamation point, exclamation point, cake slice emoji, candle emoji, emoji with the hard eyes. Back on the campus of Robert Morris, hit ahead 44-35, and if you were a basketball player for about 30 years, you remember coming to five-star basketball camp, which one of the campuses was here on Robert Morris, and it was just a place you went to play with the best players in the country and to get coached in an up close and personal way by the likes of John Calipari, Coach K, Patrick Ewing. I mean, everybody went to this camp. I went to five star in high school the week after the guest speaker was Michael Jordan. No. And all anybody did, our guest speaker talked about Michael Jordan being there the week before. <laughs> of course. But you'd be playing outside, and there's Coach K, there's Roy Williams. It, it was sensational. Now, what I remember is Robert Morris is such a hilly campus. You'd be doing stations. You'd be on station 10, and they go, all right, station 11 is uh, over that mountain, and you got to run. And that's where you learn your fundamentals. You take it home. You work on it with your high school team. But for generations and generations, that was the name in fundamentals and in basketball camps. Yeah, you saw Hubie Brown there with Patrick Ewing. You'd be one of the all-time greats, obviously. And uh, you're not the great coaching, the great players. And what a way to spend a week in the summer, right? The best. Gets the best players in the country. Now, I went in August when all of New York City would go. Now, when I tell you we had Harlem, the Bronx, that was a rowdy crew, OK? There was not a, a group <laughs> get together of an assembly or of a meeting that didn't break out in a rap battle, a <laughs> dance contest, a dribbling contest. That's fun. I mean, that's when you fall in love with the game. Yeah. And you get great fundamentals. Jeff Capel came here after being an assistant at Duke. Obviously, cold, coached Old Dominion, Oklahoma. Blake so, Griffin. He's a veteran guy, knows the game, that's for sure. But he's up against it in the ACC. I mean, we talk about some of these teams. And we didn't even talk about, you know, Syracuse. Clemson's got a good program. Virginia Tech. Wake Forest under Danny Manning. I mean, and UVA. I mean, yeah, UVA. UVA. Wait a minute now. The national champs. How can I forget them? They just held an opponent to 34 points. Mamadi Diakite, of course, a big time performer for them, as well as Braxton Key and Kia Clark. I mean, doesn't, there's not a night off in the ACC, period. Yeah, Tony Bennett, one of my favorite coaches. And again, on the boards, Pitt going after it. That's Terrell Brown. He got fouled. And we'll take a break. 14-21 left. Pitt has come out strong in the second half. They lead by eight.
connected to those. Alexa, what's on my schedule today? At 2 p.m., there's a haircut appointment. Alexa, play some music. Alexa, how do I get shiny hair? For shiny hair, consider incorporating finishing oil to your styling routine. Food choices on opening night at the UPMC Event Center here in Moon Township. A new season of 30 for 30 podcasts are here. Episode 1, the story of WNBA superstars Diana Taurasi and Super and their relationship they had with their Russian team owner, a man they grew to love and a mysterious past he had. And were those stories of him being a KGB spy involved in organized crime? Were they true? We're going to find out on the 30 for 30 podcast. Two of the great players out of the UConn program and Gino Oriema played many years in Europe. She, she's my favorite player of all time, Diana Taurasi. Yeah, she's me so too. Fun to watch. That's funny you say that. Del Deladon is up there. Yes. But Taurasi is such a killer. I'll pay to see her she anywhere. Her anywhere. She's awesome. Anytime. Also, you want to run your team because you know it's going to be tooth and nail. She's going to fight to the very yeah, end. The most competitive person. Most in I've history. seen anywhere. I don't care. Men, women, Diana Taurasi. All right, so Brown, one of two. And a nine-point lead for Pitt. It was tied at halftime, 27 apiece. Only eight points in the opening six minutes of the second half for Robert Morris. Pitt's been picking up the intensity. Backdoor cut. That's what you need. And they run out of time. Doesn't matter, they'll take that. Coach Andy Tool will take that type of turnover. You didn't start the break for Pitt. And I'm you had a great backdoor cut. I'm Pitt is begging, excuse me, Pitt is begging you to go backdoor. They're saying, please, Robert Morris, go backdoor and get a layup. They finally cut. I think there may be a problem with the clock. Uh, I don't know if the, the shot clock was correct or not. That's what they're checking on right now. The monitor review is something that's going to be a little bit different this year. In the last two minutes of a game. Yeah, you know, there was a shot clock problem, and they're trying to figure out what happened. But the monitor review, Noah, allowing basket interference or goaltending. In the last two minutes of a game, you can go to the monitor to check that out. All last second shots will be confirmed at the monitor this year. So that shot clock violation was incorrect. They put 10 on the clock. And it's going to be Robert Moore's ball. The other thing coaches can do in the last two minutes of games, they can call a live ball timeout. That's something new. Here they are. Hawkins drives inside, puts it up left hand and one shot. He dove inside and creative left handed off the glass. He had a wide open 15 footer, but he got a difficult one footer instead. Xavier Johnson, only two points in the ball game. Now Pitt's running the same play over and over again, so the Colonials need to make an adjustment. Collins kicks it. Can't get the shot off. Shot clock down to five. And Collins lays it up and in. What a night he's had. 20 points, seven for nine. Hasn't made a three. Everything's been inside for him. That's a great time to drive. Somebody drives and kicks to you. The defense is going to be recovering. And they use that aggression against them. Got all the way to the bucket. The feed down low and off balance shot at the bottom of the rim. McGowan's on the run out. Kicks to Johnson and Johnson launches and he hits. Finally, a bucket for Xavier Johnson. He had gone 0 for 5 from the field. And Pitt has their biggest lead. Right, DJ Russell lost his footing underneath. Baseline drive and a missed shot and a missed tip and a loose ball and it's off Pitt. Now we talked about these dynamic guards for Pitt. And they put it together here in this sequence. Right there, 
nice rip through and then jump to the side by Trey McGowan. Trey McGowan's. And then Xavier Johnson just sets up in transition. That's one of the best times to shoot a three wide open on the break. That's easy money. Dump it down low to Russell trying to overpower Ryan Murphy. And another block. What a night Terrell Brown is having. When you see number 21 in blue and you're playing for Robert Morris, you got to kick it out. It's his fifth block inside. Right here, you see number 21, get out of there. It's not going to work. We're going to have double technicals here. Let's see. A lot of verbiage going on between a couple of players, Champagny and Bain, I think. Saying, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. You coming over Thanksgiving? You good? You been good? <laughs> I'm surprised. Could have been worse. Official jumped in to put a stop to that. It's a key stretch for Robert Morris. This game doesn't get out of hand. Got to string together a couple stops. Only 10 points in the first eight minutes of the second half for the Colonials. Gowans, meanwhile, having a super night and a block. Well, oh, the contact came there out near the, the three-point arc. Foul called on the defender, and we go to a timeout. 11.49 to go. Pitt trying to stop a long road losing streak. See event center guess what they run these little contests and a moment ago a man stood 50 feet away and he took one step and he fired it and he hit it oh and everybody in the building gets an appetizer at the yard and he had a yard shirt on i wonder if he works at the yard that was unbelievable guess what mike we're going to the yard we are we're in the building i'm getting we just an appetizer. what are you getting i'm getting wings Wings. What? That's too basic. It's a little basic. <laughs> Mozzarella sticks. Calamore, you got a you got a wide variance, man. Take your wrist. It's not good Pennsylvania. for Pennsylvania. It's not good for it, but it tastes good. All right, so Robert Morris and their Colonial Crazies got to get behind their team here. 11:40 to go in the ball game. Pitt has opened up a 12-point advantage. Stay man to man. And what a move inside, but unable to convert. Xavier Johnson is in a tough day. And on the breakout, a layup for two from Jalen Hawkins of sophomore. Great dish on the break by Robert Morris. But Xavier Johnson, that looked like a dribbling drill. That was just orange cones. I mean, he gets wherever <laughs> he wants. Yes, he does. Now McGowan's, what a night he's had. But that time he couldn't get it to go. And it ended up on the baseline off of the Colonials. Robert Morris finally gets a stop. He's able to push it ahead. Great extension to avoid the shot block by Jalen Hawkins, another junior college transfer. Uh, Panthers quickly score, though, off the inbounds, and they're back ahead by 12. The UPMC Event Center. Capacity crowd 4,000, and the Colonials get an easy bucket. There's something they needed. Yeah, Jalen Hawkins, back-to-back -back great plays. Good dish inside to Yanis Mendy. Lead is 10. Here's McGollins. He has been a terror all night. And this time it rims in and out. Batted out of bounds off of the Colonials. Now what he does, Trey McGowans, he doesn't let the first defender stop him. He doesn't let the second defender stop him. He'll try you out. You have to make sure he's completely stopped before he gives it up. If you compare that to the Robert Morris attack on the on the pick and roll sometimes, they just pick it up and, they, and nobody forced them to. So your, your work isn't done until he gets rid of the ball. Yeah, sophomore from Pendleton, South Carolina. He had a freshman record, 33 against Louisville last year. He's a pro. I mean, he is absolutely a pro. 
Great athlete, great handle. They got to work on the field goal percentage. It was under 38% last year, a little better this year. Step back is good. And McGollins is really feeling it now. 23. Now to pick a roll, and it works. To perfection, A.J. Bravo off the feed for layup. Brahma now has six. They're just giving it to McGowan to let him work. Here he goes again. And he's able to draw the contact. That time he shifted right to left. He's been predominantly a right-handed driver, but that was a little bit different. He's got a great change of pace. And it's the pit offense where they've been running Ryan Murphy off a drift. They get him out of the way, they get him to the corner, then high pick and roll. That time, great Euro step. And when you can jump, you get off the ground three or four feet, you got extra time to turn it into a reverse. But he's got great shiftiness. He and Xavier Johnson, when they attack pick and rolls, they know how to stop and start. And it's like a running back hit in the hole. Yeah, one thing with Johnson and McGowns is tonight, they haven't gotten to the line very much. Just two of three between them, but last year, they went to the line between them 10 or more times in a game, 13 games. So you get guards who get to the line and make free throws, that's a huge advantage. He goes one for two. Xavier Johnson got to the line 209 times last year. Trey McGowan's 165. They really put the pressure on you. And Coach Cable is telling us he knows they're going to be aggressive. Now, can you add in the great decision making with the aggression? And the maturity, obviously, just sophomores. High post, Mendy. Yanis, no good. Front rim, saved. Into the hands of Champagne, and here come the Panthers. Well, they try to go alley oop, end up with a loose ball, and a stick back is good by Andes Tony. Biggest lead for Pitt now, 58-43. They have a nice job defensively in the second half. Mendy, good for three. Got a look, good-looking stroke from about 17 feet. Really pure. Lead back to 13. And a whistle stops play. McGowan's, who just went to the bench, had just 20 points in his first two games of the season. He's got 25 tonight. So he's picked up something. He's discovered something. Talking to Tim O'Toole, the former Fairfield coach. And they got three head coaches on the bench over there with Jeff Capel. They got a good coaching staff. Yeah, they want consistency out of Trey McGowan's. I mean, he's had the explosive games, a 30-point game as a freshman a year ago. He's too good to have games where he's not in double figures. I mean, he is a special athlete, great shiftiness, great explosion. And you always take the biggest leap between freshman and sophomore year. Just all the little things that make it hard. How do I get to class? How do I find my meal plan? All that stuff you don't worry about when you're a sophomore and you take these giant leaps. He's special. And McGowan's only one turnover in this game, five assists between them. Johnson and McGowan's have 10 assists in this game. Xavier Johnson has four turnovers. That's one of the things that Jeff Capel talked to us about today. Minimize turnovers, be aggressive, keep attacking, but take what the defense gives you. What does that really mean? I mean, in plain English, when to pass, when to shoot, when to drive, when to pull it out. It's what do you see? All right, they go to a matchup zone now. Colonials around at the high post. Oh, great team down low and stuffing it home. Justin Champagne. Wow, what a pass. One hand pass by Xavier Johnson. I think Xavier Johnson showed a lot of maturity in the fact that he's not having the biggest game in terms of scoring, but playing a great floor game, and that pass showed it. Panthers doing a better job on the boards as well. Out rebounding the Colonials 29 to 19. 
It was 19-15 at halftime. Pitt plus four. Now they're plus ten. Murphy drives. Floater, no. Seven and a half to go. And Pitt trying to snap that long road losing streak. 24 in a row away from home. That'll be a foul on the Colonials. How about this last pass? They switched the zone. Xavier Johnson says no problem. Deliver it to the big guy. He'll send it in. And the Panthers by 15. Been a while since the Pitt Panthers won a game away from Pittsburgh. February of 2017 in Boston against Boston College. And they got it done that day. But since then, 24 straight tries away from home. No wins. And it's all about building the program for Coach Cable here. And we talked about it. It's a work in progress. It's not like, you know, he spent years at Duke. It's not like that. You can look up at all the banners. You can rely on the older guys. He's trying to create a new culture here, and that takes time. And he tried to warn his team coming off of that big win against Florida State about Nickel State. He said he, said he saw it coming. It was human nature, but sometimes you need to fight human nature. It's an old Mike Krzyzewski thing. All teams go through it. Pitt's still growing up right now. And Tracy attacks the rim, and the foul is whistled. It's going to be on Murphy, I believe. Trey McGowan tonight, 8 for 12 from the field, 8 for 10 from the line. How about this, Noah? Seven rebounds, five assists, two steals. Now that's filling up a stat sheet. Well, when Danny Ainge evaluates point guards, GM of the Celtics, first thing he looks at is, is rebounds. That shows your activity. That shows your vision. That's a big reason why he drafted Rajon Rondo. So when you see a, a guard getting those long rebounds, you know he's active, you know he's alert. So Xavier Johnson pulls it out, and he'll run some clock here. Under seven minutes to go on a 15-point lead. So McGowan's at double him for the moment, and they turn him over. John Williams ahead to Tracy, and Tracy missed it. The rebound, Terrell Brown. Good no call. He jumped into him. Tracy too worried about getting fouled. Brown's got eight rebounds. So Pitt can take their time here. They got the lead. 15 to shoot. Xavier Johnson, who's struggled, only one of seven from the field, has the ball in his hands. He goes inside, dumps it off to Brown, and a shot is blocked. From behind, nice block by Charles Bain. Another great dish by Xavier Johnson. Tracy attacks the D, and he can't get it to go. Comes loose. Williams in the corner missed. Bain got the rebound. John Williams tries. That's no good. There's a lid on it right now for the Colonials. Coach Sewell told us they've got to knock down shots if they want to beat Pitt. The two wide open shots from the Williams brothers. Got to knock those down if you're going to hope to beat an ACC team. And a timeout on the floor at 5.36 to go. Right now, Robert Morris over three minutes without a field goal. They were 9 of 28 in the first half, just 32%. And only 8 of 23 in the second half, so the same kind of offensive struggles. Now, the Northeast Conference, where Robert Morris is picked fifth in the preseason polls, and I don't know how much stock you put in preseason polls. I don't really put that much stock in it. Yeah, almost none, because think about the amount of transfers in college basketball now. You're bringing junior college players, you graduate guys, and players take giant leaps year to year. Yeah, we were talking to Andy Toole about this. The Northeast Conference is one of the conferences that has lost many of the you know, star players in this conference to bigger schools, major schools. You have a great freshman or sophomore year in the NEC. Some people are going to come looking for you. 
and a lot of guys have taken opportunity to move up two or three levels. Yeah, he said he told us he used to whine about it, but it doesn't do that anymore. It's just part of the deal. And Murphy travels. That was the first turnover, I believe, in the second half for Pitt. They had eight or second in the second half. They had eight in the first half. So they've been doing a much better job listening to what Jeff Capel was preaching, taking care of the basketball. All right, and that's another unforced one, though. That's going to that might, you know, that's going to go on the tape when Pitt looks at his game and says, come on, guys, we can control these ones. Throwing it out of bounds, traveling. Corner pocket three, that's no good. And Pitt comes up with a rebound. And Xavier Johnson attacks inside, kicks in the corner. Murphy, step back three. In and out. Rebound, Champagne. Ball stripped, he got it back. Missed it. Got it back again, and he's going to go to the line. That's second and third effort that time by the freshman from Brooklyn. Went to Bishop Lachlan. This was a James Harden as cross court pass by Xavier Johnson that got Brian Murphy open. Unbelievable pass, and then Champagne just stuck with it forever. But when you're driving to your left and you can throw it all the way across the D, completely to the other side of the court. That's sensational. That's great vision. And being a great floor general by Johnson. And Champagne makes it. Well, this Pitt team started the season with a win against Florida State. It was a heck of a game. It was ragged. It was ugly. First game of the year, the crowd was going nuts in the Peterson Events Center. And then they lose to Nichols State the next game out. But playing conference games early, we're seeing a lot more of that. Do you like it? I love it. I mean, it forces some of these high major squads to really have a real schedule early and not just rack up wins and sit at home and go to neutral courts. I think it's great for the game overall, and it forces you to be ready sooner. But we're seeing some rugged play early, especially out of the high majors. Yeah, that, that double header at Madison Square Garden, the top four teams in the country. Oh, what a steal. Allen's on a run out, and scoops and missed. Could not finish. Back the other way. Corner, Williams. Lost it, regained it. McGollins has it. It gets wild, and now Johnson will fire, and that's no good. Now, this game is, it got really ragged. Now, Mike, you feel how there were two turnovers, the guy falling down. I think Coach Cable would like Xavier Johnson to pull that thing out. He got the lead. That's just feel. That's feeling the flow of the game where, wait, we're a little out of control. I know you're wide open, but we've got the lead. Take a 30-second shot clock and focus on winning the game. Well, you know the time and score, right? You've heard that many times. You know what the time is of the game, what the score is. That can dictate what you're going to do. Johnson wants to get to the rim. He does, but he can't convert it. And a rebound is batted around. Let's see. And Robert Morris, I think, has it. Josh Williams, and they finally call a foul. How about that hustle, though? Both sides. And it brings us to a timeout. 321 to go. Pittsburgh's taking control in the second half, and they lead it 62 to 47. For all of the heroes who serve us, T-Mobile is offering 50% off family lines for military, veterans, and first responders. And now we're also offering half off our top Samsung phones. Our service is just one way we say thank you. Come on out on ESPN on the ESPN app. It's a star-studded NBA Wednesday doubleheader. Starting at 7.30 Eastern, Kawhi and the Clippers taking on James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and the Rockets. Then at 10 Eastern, LeBron, AD, and the Lakers hosting D'Angelo Russell and the Warriors. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Stephen A's pregame Sports Center. So, in the words of Jim Morrison, the lead singer with the doors, the West is the best. There's no doubt in the Western Conference. They're you got to stay up later now, Noah Savage. You got to watch more NBA later because all the good games, or most of them, are happening out West. I mean, the games are so good. <laughs> like, you have to stay up for them. How about how exciting the Jazz are to watch this year? We added Mike Connolly, Joe Ingles, Donovan Mitchell, yep. and the Nuggets with the Joker, who's probably my favorite player in the last 20 years. <laughs> he might be. Yeah, Denver, Utah, they're dark horses, but guess what? 
Portland's good too. Oh, nice move. And a banker goes in. Josh Williams. He's been a little quiet. Josh only has five points. Two of ten shooting. That was his second field goal. Robert Morris has to get stops the rest of the way. Pitt trying to snap that 24 game road losing streak. They've never lost to Robert Morris. They've beaten him 30 straight times. First meeting since 2011. Here's Johnson in some trouble. Go for a three, and it's good. And they got it from Odis Tony. Sophomore. Maybe they're giving him two. We'll have to check that. Here's a three. Hawkins answers. Jalen Hawkins. A pitch is running it down to under five every time. A little flex action. Colonial six of 19 in the sec uh, in the game from three. Here's McGowan's and he dumps it into traffic and it comes loose and it's off the Colonials with 11 seconds to shoot. 2:01 left in the game. Ryan Murphy comes back in. He's been great for Pitt. I mean, his shooting, his leadership, but you can just feel when he's on the court, everybody in blue feels better about themselves on the offensive end. He makes it life easier by spreading it out, even when he doesn't have the ball. Yeah, they have three men in double figures. Here's Johnson. He got a shot block, but they're going to call foul on John Williams. He said he has all ball. Might have caught him with the body. That's another rule we're going to see more of. Not particularly that play, but the flop. We'll talk about that in a second. But here's another look at that. Yeah, he got his arm. Yeah, a ton of elbow. Good call. But yeah, they're cleaning up the flop. You know, it's no more thespian skills allowed. <laughs> Do you think that's going to be much of a factor on a nightly basis in this in the NCAA? Only if it's egregious. It's too hard to see if somebody's fouled, see if they're not fouled at all, and then throw in intent and wait, did you mean to kick your leg out and did you mean to flop your head back? It is just it's too much unless it's egregious. Now, in my playing days, I would have been kicked out immediately. Uh, so one team warning all player delays. And a class B technical foul for all the subsequent delays. They're calling it a delay when you do that. You know, you see players that have been doing this for a while. Here's a steal. Brown. And he got wrapped up. Let's see how they call this. Got to make a play on the ball, but it looked like he wrapped up his arms. I don't know what they're going to say. We'll find out. Yeah. Yep. Intentional. So they're giving two shots. <laughs> Jeff Capel was ready to plead his case, and he goes, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, we, I we gave it to you. <laughs> That's always awkward when you argue with the official, and then they go, wait, wait, wait. We're, yes, we agree with you. <laughs> you don't expect that. That does not happen very no. often, no. Yeah, you got to make a play on the ball. Probably should have. So Brown goes to the line. He's got 10 points, and still got 10 points. Nine rebounds, five blocks, though. It's the kind of game you need from your big man. It's been great. It's been Six ten, fantastic. He kept them in the game in the first half. Robert Morris is about to run away with this thing. He went to Tilton School in New Hampshire. He misses them both. And Providence. He's got a seven foot three wingspan. You talk about shot blockers. That's the kind of size you want. Seven three wingspan. And nine foot one standing reach. That means all I got to do is jump a foot and dunk it. Yeah, he's got great timing too. What's Wait. your standing reach, Mike? It, uh, well, I don't know. I have to. <laughs> let me let me check. <laughs> and you have to list your real height now. No, that's, that's not that's the fair. rule. That's like not an fair. NBA. All right, final minute and a half. Pit by 15. It'll take their time here. Johnson and got it deflected loose. Murphy comes up with it. He missed a shot. And a foul here called on the Colonials. It's going to be on one of the Williams brothers. Hey, tonight at 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app after college basketball. Stick around for Sports Center with Kenny Main and John Anderson. 
to my favorites. Seth Greenberg will be in the studio. Post game reaction from number 14, Oregon, number 13, Memphis. Also, the Oregon football head coach, Mario Cristobal, will be in studio. And what's behind that Steelers turnaround? They're all pretty happy around here in the Pittsburgh area as the Steelers have kind of rekindled hope in their season. Bunch of Steelers on hand here tonight, former players. Charlie Batch, Rocky Blyer. Juju Smith-Schuster is sitting in with the fans of the Colonials as Tony makes the free throw. 69-52. Now Pitt's got the backyard brawl coming up against West Virginia. That's next. That was thrown out of bounds. And that's always a classic game. Of course, Bob Huggins has his team playing physical. They've added Oscar Chibwe, McDonald's All-American. Yeah, that's a given, right? The Huggins team. Pitt went after Hart. So, you know, you recruit a guy for two or three years, he goes to your rival. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's tough business. I know UConn was in on Precious Achua in a big way, and he ended up going to Memphis. It happens. And now we have a push, a little bit of a push away from the ball called against Robert Morris, A.J. Brahma. That puts the double bonus in play. They're trying to clean up some of the physicality where in the past you would only see the retaliation. So if you give someone a little jab, they're just trying to call it right away so that it doesn't escalate. And Tony makes the first. This NEC, the Northeast Conference, what a balanced league. In the last 12 years, LIU Brooklyn's been to the NCAA tournament four times, Robert Moore's three times, Mount St. Mary's three times. Fairly Dickinson twice. There's no real dominant team. Yep. Everybody's in it every year, and that's what Andy Toole is facing. And this year, LIU Brooklyn picked to finish first. Their coach, Derek Kellogg's third season. Now to tie it back here to Moon Township, he was eight seasons under Calipari in Memphis, nine seasons as the UMass head coach. You've got Raekwon Clark, Ty Flowers, jo Joshua Augusto. But I think the top four or five all have a chance at it. Robert Morris, Fairleigh Dickinson, St. Francis, and Sacred Heart as well. Pittsburgh's had all 71 of their points from just six players. Corner three, that one's good, finally. One goes in for Josh Williams. Been a rough night for him. Three for 11 overall, one for six from three. Final 30 seconds. And a steal, bad pass. Here comes Josh, and he'll lay it up. They call goaltending. The ball had hit the glass. And a goaltending call. Justin Champagny, pretty impressive bounce right there. I thought he was going to let him go, but he can just jog into that type of leap. That's an effort thing. All right, Ryan Murphy and the Panthers will run the timeout here and do something they haven't done since February 8th in 2017. That's win a game away from their home court. 24 straight road losses. And that comes to an end right now as Pittsburgh defeats Robert Morris by a final of 71 to 57. And they make it 31 in a row all time against Robert Morris. If Pitt did what they had to do in the second half, took care of the basketball, got good shots, and then fed off of their defense, but turned around the offensive end. Yeah, Terrell Brown was huge. He had 10 points. He had five blocks after just two points in his first two games. Pittsburgh wins it over Robert Morris. For Noah Savage, I'm Mike Crispino. Good night.